Amen. Uh, before we hand over to Coach Sam, um, like it's our custom, why we like to pray together is because we're building a culture where someone is not just praying over you or praying for you, but we're praying together. There's something about that. So I want us to pray in the spirit for a moment together. I love that scripture you read, that nobody escaped it. Everybody came under the power of God. I will, we talked about the same spirit. So I'm going to unmute our mic. We're going to do it for like two minutes. Wherever you are, I want to just unmute your mic and pray in the Holy Spirit. My spirit is alive. My heart is receptive in the name of Jesus. Oh, <laughs> in Jesus' name of pray. I dear Father, Lord, we are ready for what you're set to do in our lives. We thank you because you are faithful. We thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are, you are God. You are God. Everything you are said to do. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just pray. That your vessel, Lord, your vessel is ready. That Lord, you will speak through him. We pray the word of God will come. It will penetrate our hearts. It will come with power. There will be deliverance. There will be healing. Our lives will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, for in Jesus' precious name we prayed. Amen. If you're fit for purpose, I want you to put in the chat box, I am fit for purpose. I am fit for purpose. I am fit for purpose. Hallelujah. All right, writing that, I want to read briefly Coach Sam's um, biography, just briefly. Sam Obafemi is an unconventional thinker. He's called the octopus because his primary preoccupation Preoccupation is to solve problems and, in fact, where possible, help people avoid them. He's a firm promoter of communities, tribe, and membership, especially how to leverage his vehicle to make work for members. He's a trained computer scientist, turned behavioral chain therapist, and business community strategist. Um, he's a former president of Empowerment of Life Coaches Association of Nigeria and also a member of the Advisory Council of LCAN. With Jesus Joy, me, I'm going to add my own. He's a lover of God. He's a, he's a prophet. He has a prophetic option and gift. 
um, manifesting greatly in his life. I've known him for almost 20 years. I've known him for over, well, over, yeah, about 18 plus years. And I'm excited to welcome him here. With Jesus joy, can we just welcome Coach Sam Obafemi? Over to you, Oga. Thank you so much, my G. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank God for your life. And I thank God for all you've been doing all these years. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for always waking up to do this assignment. It's such a, a huge relief and a form of security when we can look up to you for cover. Thank you so much. My name is Sam Obafemi, like Misia has said. <clears throat> I'm called the octopus. I am grateful for the opportunity to share this morning. I'm going to be talking from different perspectives and by the grace of God, um, the Holy Spirit is going to do what he does best, giving you illumination, teaching you what to do and helping you with the implementation for your lives. I want to say a quick prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come under your instruction and utterance. And I ask that for the sake of the child in this room that you have sent me, you will do what you do best. I submit my thinking to you and my words that you will use me for the reason why you have made this possible. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. I'm going to be talking about the power of a sound mind. And I, my conversation with Missy, I'm going to be talking about adverse childhood experiences because traumas and a lot of things about our past is interrupting and interfering with our capacity to emerge and take the world for Christ and take even become representatives for Christ. Um, when the Bible says that God is looking and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, there is a manifestation that we all are supposed to have and become, but our past is interfering and interrupting the possibilities of that manifestation. So this morning, I'm going to be talking of about the power of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I want to use a few minutes to explain what it means to have a sound mind. What does it mean <clears throat> to have a sound mind? A sound mind and memory, I'm going to talk about memory also, because like I said, everything in the future is embedded in the past. A sound mind and memory refers to a person's state of being, state of being, mindset, state of mind, where you are mentally, where you are emotionally, a particular state, a particular place, intellectually, mentally, emotionally, at the time of making decisions and taking actions. A sound mind and memory means the person has sufficient mental capacity to understand the implication of their emotions on their actions. So a sound mind simply means for everything I do, I am conscious of the implication of how I feel at that time and how that feeling can impact on what I am doing at that time. I was talking to the mother of my children on Sunday and I was telling her that some decisions we have made have cost implication for the rest of our lives. There are decisions you are taking that have implications for the rest of your life. And just like where you are coming from, which I'm going to discuss as adverse childhood experiences, have implications 
on you for the rest of your life. So we're going to be discussing how you should become conscious of what has happened to you and how that is having an implication, an impact on you for the rest of your life. The reason why many of you do not are struggling, for example, to build capacity, academic capacity and credentials, maybe adverse childhood experiences. The reason why some of you find it difficult to relate with your siblings can be adverse childhood experiences. The reason why some of you find it difficult to have a functional platonic relationship, I'm not talking of romantic, platonic relationship with people. Some people struggle to mingle. Some people struggle to hold conversations. Some people even struggle to even accept being alone. You know, some people are afraid of being alone. There are so many dimensions to adverse childhood experiences. And the trauma of that is holding many people captive. So while we are praying for deliverance, we must also back it up with knowledge, being informed that if I know where I have been trapped, then I can receive illumination. Because from my experience, the more information that comes to you, the faster your deliverance. The more information at your disposal, the faster your deliverance. And that is very, very key. So this morning, I'm going to be talking about the power of a sound mind. And I'm going to dive into adverse childhood experiences. This image I've just shown on the screen, I want to use it to discuss <clears throat> the implication of memories. Memories are the number one of the seven filters that govern human behavior. There are seven filters. One of them is memories. Memories govern human behavior. What memories do is that memories take you back to an event or an experience and helps you judge an action that you are about to take. That's what memory does. And let me give you an example. Let us assume that in the past, you have been a friend or you have been in, a, in an association of someone who is oppressive. Then you moved on. You probably had PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, some form of anxiety about being at. When you enter another association or relationship or friendship, and there is a pattern that looks like what you went through before, you will realize that the decisions you made after you left that former relationship, you begin to activate them in this new relationship just by noticing similarities in behavior and patterns. That's what memory does. Memory is like a compass. Memory is like a regulator. Memory is like a reminder. Memory is a, is a catalyst that determines behavior. That is why we tell people when somebody is showing a pattern, that is who they are. A pattern tells us a person. But what is a pattern? A pattern simply is, this is what I did the last time so, so, so happened. So I will repeat it now that something looks like what was happening before. That's a pattern. So memories are very deep. And for you to have a sound mind, I'm about to tell you something very important. Please hear this one. For you to have a sound mind, you may have to work on deleting some memories. For you to have a sound mind, you may have to work on removing or resolving some memories, especially trauma-biased relation um, memories, trauma-based uh, memories. If you do not detach from them or resolve them, you will stay traumatized. You will stay traumatized. If you do not detach from a negative memory, you will stay traumatized because you'll be repeating the patterns. You'll be repeating the patterns. I have been robbed in Lagos before, many times, two or three times, actually. I remember the first time I was robbed in Lagos. That was 2000 and five or 2006, 
I was at Adeni Jones, 2005, I remember. I was, I left home around 4 a.m. You know, this usual Lagos leaving home very early kind of a thing. So I left home around 4.30 or thereabouts. And I was heading towards the roundabout of, um, of Afemi Aulawa from Adeni Jones, that lonely path that heads towards uh, of Afemi Aulawa um, Expressway. Is there an expressway? The roundabout. And then a bike was coming, a motorcycle with two guys on it. And then they stopped and one of them held a screwdriver and was threatening to stab me if I didn't release my phone. So I released my phone and they drove off. And I was quite upset. I rem in fact, I remember the day, April 18th, 2005. I remember that day. So I got on the bus, went to the office. By the time I got to the office, my boss then told me to resign because I was doing a certification that was not part of our office operation. So he felt I was doing something totally different from what we do in the office. So here I was, my phone was robbed that morning. I got to the office and I was asked to resign. So the same day I lost my phone, I lost my job. <laughs> Guess what that happened to me? Anytime I'm in any lonely place at night, any day I'm in any lonely place at night, I'm suddenly checking, is there a bike coming? How many people are on the bike? What would they likely do? And I'm always taking precautionary measures. So I'm constantly in a state of, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And then anytime I remember loss of job, I remember loss of my phone. It's like a twin event because they happened about the same time on the same day. That's memory. Memories will always interfere with your functionality. And if the memory is not a catalyst for a good thing, you have to resolve it so that it does not interfere with your performance. Very, very important. If you have been under a terrible spiritual leader, you may not likely be functionally spiritual. If you have been under a spiritual leader that was abusive, that was molesting you, that was fleecing you, that was stealing from you, that was oppressing you, that was cursing you, you will become hypersensitive about spiritual leadership. That's just the way it works. If you have worked in a, maybe you have, you have been a member of a choir, intercessors group, youth, youth leader uh, membership, women membership, and you have had a very chaotic experience in those cycles, guess what? It's going to impact on your performance in any of such cycles if you don't resolve the memory. So memory is very deep. And that brings us to adverse childhood experiences. So what are adverse childhood experiences? Adverse childhood experiences, which we also call ACEs, ACEs, is defined as any stressful, traumatic event that can have a negative lasting effect on your health and your well being. Adverse childhood experiences account for the first 18 years of your life. The incidences and events that happened to you and around you in the first 18 years of your life. You see, let me tell you something. What happened in the first 18 years of your life, whether you accept it or not, is a determinant of the rest of your life. Those were the base of your life, the foundation of everything. If you grew in a home that was functional, it is already given. You know, when the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Whether you like it or you like it, the way your 18, first 18 years went is how you are. No matter the influences, there's already a foundation that cannot change. So if you grew in a home that was functional, and what is a functional home? Where love was easily shared where forgiveness was a thing, where, you know, praying together was a thing, where responsibility was pronounced, where father was a father, 
Mother was a mother. Father was not doing mother role. Mother was not doing father role. If you grew in that kind of a home, it has set something in your DNA. Unfortunately, if anyone grows in a home where toxicity is the thing, abuse is the thing, cursing is the thing, you know, waywardness is the thing, etc. 18 years, 18 years, guess what? Something has been set in your DNA. And it takes warfare. You know, when the Bible says, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and only the violent take it by force. See, that is where, that is where aces come in. You have to violently take your life back if you have suffered aces. Aces include abuse, neglect, household dysfunction, such as witnessing domestic violence and growing up with family members who have substance use disorders. When you grow up in a home where siblings, you know, there is a sibling fight that is, we are just fighting. There is a sibling fight that is rivalry, parent taking sides with siblings, parents trying to scheme each other. It's crazy. It's crazy. These things form adult problems. So some of you, you now grow up, you now get a job in the office. You're looking for how to backstab a colleague. It's an unconscious thing. You're not intentionally backstabbing people. It's just that that is all you know. Somebody does a job for you. Let's say you're a boss. Your subordinate does something. You take the credit. You don't give the credit to the subordinate. It's an unconscious thing. You just think that you are being smart. It's ACISO. Somebody is challenging you, giving you feedback, tough love, telling you you need to step up. Let's do better. Let's do better. You feel victimized. You feel that they're attacking you. You say they don't like you. You see, they're always complaining about you. You don't take feedback. You don't accept no, feedback. No. You don't learn how to work on feedback. That is ACES staring you in the face. You're trying to deflect feedback. People are putting in the work, reading, building capacity, reading, writing, trying to build credentials and improve themselves so that they can get promotions or they can get better credentials to earn more. But you are stuck. You even don't know what to do with your life. You are just here and there, here and there. That's ACES. Some of you start, you don't finish. You're always starting things. You're not finishing things. Today, you want to be a journalist. Tomorrow, you want to be an accountant. Next tomorrow, you want to be a doctor. You will pay. You will start. You will leave it. Oh, I want to write a book. You will start. You will leave it. Oh, I want to sing a track. You will start. You will leave it. That is ACES. Oh. ACES is staring at you in the face. Some of you, when you lose your temper, we literally have to be worried what you will do. Some of you get violent. Some of you start spending. Just, you're just spending just to feel good. I saw somebody write on, on Twitter. He says, when I'm, when I'm angry, I just love to spend. It makes me feel more comfortable one funny english i just i did not touch the tweet i didn't retweet it i did not reply him i just moved on i mind my business i just they love that is is so these are some effects of ace ace directly affects our ability to trust it affects our ability for sound judgment it affects our ability for relationships. It affects our ability to show empathy. It affects our ability of our self-image. One of the problems of ACEs is that you, you have a wrong perception of yourself. So inferiority complex happens. You feel other people have better opportunities than you. You feel that other people are better than you. You feel that you are the lesser one in a group. These are aces. 
their self-talk in your head that were cultivated in the first 18 years of your life. And by the grace of God, today and tomorrow, we're going to fix that. There are two dimensions to ACEs. There is the direct dimension and there is the indirect dimension. The direct dimension is when people verbally abuse you using abusive words that you don't like and you can, you're not comfortable with. If you were accustomed to that in the first 18 years of your life, you were directly abused. Physical abuse that has to do with physical impact. Then sexual abuse. One of the mistakes we make about sexual abuse, when we talk of sexual abuse, people think it's just that molestation on the child, that touching of the child, that fondling of the child, and then maybe we take it as that is sexual abuse. That is part of sexual abuse. But another part of sexual abuse is that the child, you are not touching the child, but you are, get, you are making the child see you naked. You are making the child touch you. You are making the child have access to sexual activities prematurely. So it can be porn. It can be any form of sexual exposure. You did not touch the child. You are not in any way physically engaging the child in any sexual activity. But just that the child has access to any form of sexual material, it is sex, sexual abuse already. So as a child, I recall that in primary five, I had a teacher, a, a household language teacher. He would call me to the staff room and take me. So in, in those days, I don't know about now, classrooms used to have an inner room. So every class has a form master. The form master or class master, class teacher, whatever they call it. The, so the teacher is the owner of that class. So there's usually an inner room where is, that is his office or her office. So this is my house language teacher, a man, would invite me to his office. That's the inner room. And would press me against the wall. And he'll be pressing my penis against my buttocks. Maybe he used to attain orgasm. I don't know. But as way back as primary five, he was doing that to me. And it happened. I can't count how many times, but I know very well it happened many times. So we moved on. Then I became an adult. Then I had a very intense sexual urge. I had a kind of sexual appetite that was very unhealthy. It was obvious that something was not adding up because I had a kind of hunger for sex that even I couldn't really control. I, I was always wanting to have sex. So I had a very intense sexual appetite. One day I wrote this, so I have a book called, But What Do I Know? I wrote this account in the book. In developing the book, I was sharing some snippets on Facebook. So I wrote this particular account, like an introductory to this story on Facebook. And then three other guys sent me a DM. They were my primary school classmates. They had had the same experience with the same man. Oh, Precious is here. <laughs> Good to see you, my darling. They had had the same experience with the same man. So I now understood the danger. Now I have gone through therapies. Despite, despite my awareness of mental health, despite my awareness of ACEs, despite my consciousness of what the implication of that incident was, I still suffered the implication of that incident. I still lost my marriage because of the implication of that incident. I still had unhealthy sexual relationships because of the implication of that incident. I still struggled with sexual purity and sexual discipline because of that incident. I'm trying to give you a literal example what ACEs can do. ACEs can destroy a lot of things. A lot of things. 
you just be wondering why is this person behaving like this? Is every he's with every is with one woman every year? Is with one woman every year? You have no idea. You see somebody, a woman, she, she just has one libido that you cannot explain. That is how these things happen. Sometimes we judge people for being prostitutes, for being transactional with sex. They cannot love a person. They just want you to just sleep with them, just give them money, let them go. And you are judging them, this one, what a terrible behavior. You go to hell. Jesus loves you. You don't do that. If you love Jesus, you will not be doing what you are doing. My beloved is deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Aces is one major stronghold. Let me show you something. I'm going to skip this slide because I need to show you something. Look at the statistics here. It says that two out of three adults population have at least one ace. Out of the adult population of the world, two third of the adult population of the world suffer ace. Now it says children that are raised by any adult that has ace would 1,000 times more likely suffer their own ace. This is telling me, I now, for instance, as a divorcee, whether I like it or not, my children will suffer a level of ace. It is automatic. Not by my choosing, not by my desire, but by implication. So when you have suffered ace, if in your home, you used to pray, you don't know where your next meal will come from. You are suffering is. If in your home, you saw your mom cry every single time, she was suffering from one form of trauma, pain, abuse, torture, lack, suffering, you are suffering is already. If in your home, anybody has been incarcerated, sent to jail, anybody in your, in your family or that you know around your neighborhood, you have been exposed to AIDS already. If in your home, you have witnessed people using substance, unhealthy use of alcohol, substance, any form of manipulative substance, you, are, you have been exposed to AIDS already. If in your home, people do not check on each other and care. Somebody is sick, everybody just wondering, oh God, better wake up, you know if you're sick for here, or there's no compassion, no empathy. I'm sorry, you have been exposed to ACE already. There are so many crazy things that happen with ACE that we need to get informed about. When ACE has happened, the following things are the implication. World Health Organization says, one in every four people will suffer a mental health crisis in any given year. But ACEs happens to two thirds of populations. When ACE has happened to someone, or when you have ACE, the first problem that happens is a disruption of your neural development. And what does that mean? How your brain is formed is disrupted. There are developmental stages in a child. At each age, zero to three, there are things that should be happening to a normal child. Three to five, five to seven, seven to nine, nine to 11, 11 to 13, 13 to 15, 15 to 18. Developmental stages like that. When ACE is happening to a child, they skip some stages faster. That is why in some families, when the child becomes the breadwinner, the child becomes an adult faster than a normal child. So while some children are in school being children, some children are hawking on the road, making money for the family. They cannot be the same. It's not possible for those two children to be the same. Then a child goes to hawk and then goes to school and you expect them to behave like a child that Drank Milo and cornflakes and, and uh, Nestle whole grain meal and was chauffeur driven to school. You get driver, they carry you go school. You drop for school. You say, mommy, I love you. Hug, hug, kiss, kiss. Then the child that goes to hug is trekking to the school with slippers. And you expect them to be the same. Are you joking? It's not possible. 
You cannot expect a child that lives in a face may I face you where they share toilet, they share bathroom, there is no light, everybody's generator is in their head. And you are comparing that child with another child where they live in their own house with pets, cats or dogs, they have a garden, they shower, they have solar system, uninterrupted power supply. You expect them to be the same? Like seriously, <laughs> it cannot happen. So there is a neural development. There's a disruption to the neural development. There's just the way the brain just thinks that, you know what? I need to enter survival mode. A child that has been raised in a functional home does not need to be in survival mode because there is security. They trust that food will be available when food should be available. They trust that we sleep when I'm supposed to sleep. We wake up when I'm supposed to wake up. I will put on the TV when I'm supposed to put on the TV. What I will wear is not a problem. Traveling for vacation is not a problem. Even if we're not traveling for vacation, my parents, I can to my parents, I can tell them how I feel and they say, oh, you're so sickly. Okay, doctor, what should we do? They see care, they see concern, they see emotions, they see compassion, they see empathy, they see discipline, they see conversation. It's different from another child who the parents are not, they're hustling. Like, oh, better sort yourself. In fact, the parents will leave home and come back in the night and say, Shay, Eddie, Joe, ah, they could have no job now. What's it concerned me? Me, I don't go sleep. Oh. That is the home of some people. Classically different. So the child in those kind of homes, they are in survival mode. Like, oh, I have to take care of myself right now. So they get into stealing and picking things. And even those that don't steal, they are constantly in a state of, how can I edge somebody out? How can I cheat somebody? How can I take advantage of somebody? Because I need to be better. I need to, or I need to help myself in this life. It is not their fault. It is the impact of ACE that has happened. So they grow up. That is, see, any day anybody cheats you, any day anybody lies against you, any day anybody takes advantage of you, I want you to remember this conversation. That your anger is misplaced. What you should feel is compassion because they don't know any better. It's, it's an instinctive thing. It's a survival thing. It's a survival thing. So the first thing you find that such people have self-centered thinking. You have a self-centered thinking because primarily they just want to survive. They want to make sure, why do you think our politicians are stealing like there's no tomorrow? It's ace. Because they are wondering, if I don't steal and I'm not in power, ah, my family, I have to do something to protect my family. It is ace. They are stealing silly because they are insecure about their state of, of, of security and comfort. Very, very important. When your neuro, when your brain development has been impacted, three things happen. There is a social impairment. Social impairment is that you find it difficult to relate with people. If you'll be honest with yourself, you need to ask yourself, do I have a healthy system of creating new relationships and relating comfortably with people? When I'm in a group, when we are maybe in the office, at a party, at a function, do I mingle effortlessly or do I become anxious about mingling? That gives you an, that gives you an idea whether you are socially impaired. Social impairment is an anxiety about socializing. When you are anxious about socializing, it is social impairment. Emotional impairment is when you struggle to even understand how you feel. You, don't, you, can't even, you can't even state your feeling. You can't say, I feel sad. You cannot say, I feel unhappy. I feel heartbroken. I feel grateful. I feel joyful. I feel happy. You don't know how to associate with a feeling. That's emotional impairment. Some of you don't know feelings. If we say, how are you? You say, I'm OK. How do you really feel? Mm, I feel okay. 
How do you really, really feel? I'm fine. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. True. I'm okay. That's all you're saying. I'm okay. You're just repeating I'm okay. Like to you, is a feeling. Okay is not a feeling. When somebody says, for real, really, really, how are you? Thank God. Just there. God is helping me. That is not a feeling. God is helping me is not a feeling. I'm just there is not a feeling. Do you know the name of the feeling? Can you associate with a feeling? That is a major thing many Africans are struggling from. from. Research has shown many of us in Africa don't know feelings. You don't know. If I tell you, how does it feel to be excited? Some people don't know. How does it feel to be agitated? Some people don't know. They cannot connect with the meaning of the feeling. So some people call anxiety agitation. Some people call happiness joy because they cannot really relate with the meaning of the feeling. That is social emotional impairment. You have to repair yourself. If there's anything you can do after this session today, go on Google and type list of emotions. You will see over 3,000 emotions. <laughs> Spring lily. <laughs> Some English teachers are to be blamed. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> after today's session, type list of emotions. And then one emotion after the other. If you know it, create it. You know you can create any emotion on the spot. So pick an emotion, for instance, anger. Create the feeling. Think of a situation that provokes you. Create the anger at that moment. Go to the next emotion. Practice, practice relating with emotions. It is such a healing vibe. I'm telling you from experience, understanding emotions is the most important thing in your human experience. Because even in relating with God, how do you go to God in prayer with a precision of how you feel? Thank God that God is all-knowing. So God in his mercies understands our infirmities. But how do you even go to God when you can say, Lord, I'm afraid of this situation. I need your help. It's not going to God like a superman. Lord, you know what to do. You know I need this. You know, just help me. Lord, help me. It's a form of arrogance. If you understand emotions, you can relate with God at that level. After all, that is how God relates with us. Very important. You need to be able to go to God and say, Lord, I feel a sense of scare. I remember when I started contemplating remarrying. I said, I, I prayed, I said, I am afraid of marriage and I need your help because I don't want to mess it up. So you need to be able to associate with feelings. Don't feel. I was in a class last week and one man said, It is unmanly for a man to feel feelings. I looked at him like, Wow. On man, you didn't even speak English. It's unmanly for a man to feel feelings. Bele, unmanly or where? Don't do that to yourself. Oh. Biologically, you're an emotional being. So that's the second, and I'm going to start rounding up. The third is cognitive impairment. Cognitive impairment is the ability to think through a situation, to think through a process. That's cognitive. When ACEs have happened, people suspend thinking. They are numb. Remember, I told you, people that have ACE are in survival mode. Because they're in survival mode, they are not even thinking of solving problems. They are thinking of who to latch on, what to do to solve the problem. They are not thinking of, how do I get myself into a better place? Let's assume, for example, your, the impairment you have is emotional. I just told you what to do. Go to Google, type list of emotions, one emotion at a time, start creating it. The way the brain works, there's what we call neurogenesis. Neurogenesis in the brain is that when you're doing something for the first time, a nerve is born. Then there's what we call neuroplasticity. As you are repeating that thing, 
that nerve that was born is strengthening, is strengthening. It becomes better and better and better. Then you become comfortable doing it. At first it's uncomfortable, then it becomes comfortable. So cognitive impairment will not even allow you to do it. You'll be like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. She be, I'm alive. You hear some people say, she be, I'm alive and I'm making money. What do you all these things, they will be all right, I beg. She see me now, I they make money, I get children, God don't bless me, everything is okay. The person will one day with me, make it day with me. The person will not one day with me, make it day go. That is what cognitive impairment does. You don't want to do the work of fixing yourself. Mm -mm. When somebody says, you are very temperamental, you need to learn how to control your emotion. You say, well, people like me as I am. Can you not see? That's by my temperamental. People tell me on my birthday, people celebrate me. It means that I'm a good person. You don't want to do the work of, okay, this thing temperamental. How can I improve on it? No, 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 no. So when you shut down every opportunity to improve yourself, it is cognitive impairment. It has severe consequences. Now, when you suffer any of these impairments, more many people develop health risk behaviors like drinking, like smoking, like sleeping, unhealthy sleeping, unhealthy sexual behaviors, unhealthy friendships. You know, some of you, the friendships you have is a friendship of validation. You are befriending people that look up to you, who suck up to you. You, are, you don't like hearing the truth. So you are friends with people that don't tell you truth so that you are comfortable in yourself. That's an unhealthy behavior. Let me just tell you the truth. Some of you are in relationships where you're constantly seeking approval and validation. They're telling you, ah, you're so smart. Ah, you're so this. Ah, you're so this. Ah, you're so that. You're feeling like, hey, I'm a good guy. I'm a good person. That is an unhealthy behavior. I say, let me just tell you. Some of you are eating things that your body anatomy does not need. You know, everybody, God has wired us in a particular way. And there is a food for your body. There is a kind of food for your body in terms of type, quantity, and timing. No, everything is your own. You will eat plus, minus, plus, minus. Just be eating anyhow. So you can't even explain why you're having those constant headaches, those constant sleeping issues, those constant bloating issues, adding weight unnecessarily or losing weight unnecessarily, etc. So you don't know. You're just eating everything. That is unhealthy behavior. You are sleeping with everything that looks like the opposite gender. In fact, you are sleeping with your gender, not your gender, with everything. If you can sleep with a three, self, you will sleep with three. If you can sleep with your phone, self, you will sleep with your phone. That is an unhealthy behavior. You are drinking everything you see. That is an unhealthy behavior. You are in every relationship, every party, everywhere. You are everywhere. That is an unhealthy relationship and um, behavior. Do you know that being in every church service is an unhealthy behavior? Let me bring it home. You have made up your mind that provided church announces something, you will be there. It's an unhealthy behavior. It means that you don't have the discipline to say, this activity has a strategic benefit to me. This one does not have a strategic benefit to you. You don't have the judgment to say yes or no. Yes or no. Everything to you is a yes. Everything to you is a yes. That is an unhealthy behavior. It can lead to diseases. It can lead to social problems. It can lead to disability. Mental health is the number one cause of disabilities in the world. Mental health is the number one cause of disabilities in the world. It creates, the, it, it creates a situation where you are trapped. It creates a situation where you cannot behave. You, can, you are dysfunctional and can lead to physical disabilities too. So I'm going to stop at this point today. Tomorrow, we're going to do an assessment. We're going to do an assessment based on this. So if you, call, if you look at my slide, there, is, there are 10 areas that we're going to be doing an assessment. These 10 areas, tomorrow we will assess you. You will see your own ACE score. Now, if tomorrow we do the assessment and you score from four and above, then 
you are my interest. So tomorrow, by the grace of God, same time, we're going to do a test. I'm going to test everybody. You will see your score by yourself that we can now des design the way forward. But for now, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> wow. Someone said that um, Kusama has broken all the tables, no leg. <laughs> At that point, uh, all the church leaders are coming for you. You know, a couple <laughs> of things you're saying you found. And, you know, that's why, and I just saw a picture as we're speaking. I saw some, I saw a, I saw a lady's post that God is not intimidated by your professionals. Um, God is not intimidated by you being prayed for and also seeking counsel. The reason mm -hmm. why we do this every year is because I've, even in dealing with doing what I do, a lot of believers hide under, <laughs> forgetting that Romans 12 says, take your everyday life, renewing your mind. Yeah. If there is nothing wrong with your mind, why do you need to renew it on a daily basis? Right. But a lot of people cannot even identify. You know, on this call, we've done trainings where I'll tell you people, track your thoughts. You can't even track it. You don't even have, you don't know the words to use. One of the reasons, now it makes so, so much sense to me. You know, and the good thing is, there's nothing you have said here that the Holy Spirit cannot help you to overcome. Absolutely yeah. nothing. However, yeah. there is a part you have to play. If you're not able to call it that this is on LD, I'm, yeah. I'm sleeping around. It's wrong. If you cannot tell yourself that, ah, I'm always comparing myself. If you cannot tell yourself that I'm sad, I feel envious when I say other people being blessed. Because what religions, religion has done is to introduce shame. Whereas God has taken away shame. Introduce mm. shame. And the first place of deliverance, Africa has taught us this on this call, is self-awareness. A mm. lot of believers. I still talked to people last week about how believers don't believe you are human. I say, if God does not need you to be human, she has just made us angels. There's a reason we are in this human form. Yes. So we don't know what to yeah. do with our humanity. You meet people, the first thing they want to do is prophesy on you, is speak in tongues. You can't even hold conversations. You can't even talk about what's happening in the world. Let's talk about things. And let your giftings find oppression without having to be spooky. So I'm really excited about this. This is a wake-up call. A lot of us, I've told you before, a lot of us are, trauma, we are traumatized. <laughs> really, we are raising an like African home, majority of people, and we don't know what to do about it. And then you talk about it, and people just shut you down and everything. The Bible says, above all things, I, I, I pray that you prosper, even mm -hmm. as your soul prospers. I need a course with Bethel. That's where Bethel introduced Sozo. It was a his clinical. They introduced a couple of things. I did a course with Bethel. And by the time the woman was done, he says, some of you, they will take you back to your childhood. You begin to go on a journey. Somebody has to, you have to look back. You see, and I'll use myself as an example as we wrap up this one, because we're going to pray that God open our eyes before we come tomorrow. Because I've seen a place where people walk out on these processes, coach, because of the shame. They can't afford to feel that this, their tongue-speaking, demon-chasing, ground-shaking humanness is, is, Feeling what they are feeling, true. and I can Very tell you, for those that you have been on this call, I will, you know, I say it as it is. One of the greatest blessings or and the secret of my life is processing with God, and in the course processing with God, which will be available for you later this year, is the fact that you can associate your feeling. You can't go to God and say, "Father Lord, Father Lord." But I say a lot of people, I, Pastor Paul, just said that right back. People can't pray in their understanding because it's a lot of work. You have to be reading the Word to pray. You. A lot of us have been programmed to pray in tongues. Okay, now tell them to pray and understand the war. Hmm. One of the things the Lord said to me I, um, at the point I was processing with God, He said, You see, I delivered you from poverty. So, a lot of us can find yourself this way. You are free from poverty, you are no longer poor. But you see, the ace of lack of running out, the ace of the, the fear of lack is a serious ace. Yeah. Where is it coming from? You grew up with, don't finish your food, though. All I quit you. Yeah. Mommy, we are hungry. Go and pray. <laughs> That's some of you think that his prayer point is Baba la discussion. Right. So All what right. is happening is you are making money. You are getting better. But you are you are tormented in your promised land. Because there's fear of, some of you, God bless you today. You are afraid that you will run out tomorrow. So even the blessings you enjoy, you can't enjoy it. It's coming from somewhere. You yes. saw that. 
you manage, yes. you are not yes. here yourself, you are the one, and it's okay. Is it there's a difference between going up to work when you're young and going up working because you have to take care of yourself? There are two right. different things. There are people that they are raised in an LB home and it's a good culture where they start to work from the age of 14. Yes. It's different from you are working because family has to eat. So I want us to pray. And when the Lord showed me, I'm telling you, I'm telling you this, and I keep telling people around me, if you cannot receive truth, you cannot be a friend of God. Mm. Because God is a God mm. of truth. Mm. He will show you mm. like mm. this area of your life. This area, and that is why when people say eh, I, I am close, you are not possessing with God. If you possess, we can tell you this anger. This is anger. I remember time you was like, God said to me, What are you feeling right now? I said, Lord, this one is all a good feeling. Oh. And I'm asking myself as Coach Sam was speaking, where did I pick that from? It definitely wasn't from my background, it's from a walk with God. If you are truly sincere with God, this thing Coach Sam is saying, God will take you through it. He might not just know that his ace is doing, he will take you through it. The question is, how many of us are sincere with God? So thank you, sir. We're going to pray. Wherever you are, you'll mute your mic if you want and just say, Father, help me open my eyes. Open my eyes to see the truth. Sometimes, um, like Bethel will say, a lot of people are trying to apply spirit things for your spirit on soul. The thing about the soul, the way to deal with the soul is quite different. The spirit is also is supposed to enable you to deal with the soul. The soul needs truth. The soul needs revelation. So Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus on this call. As some of us are going to go and go and check emotions and begin to ask what and some of us are giving. We we lost that thing about going to church, all church programs. It might not even be your church. Is that every program in Lagos you must attend? It's a problem. Because at, at what point, and then you my husband will say you go to this program, they say, This week is your week. You go to another one, they say, Next week is your week. Then you go to another one, they will say, For you in this church, what we are doing now is full fast. Then you go to another one, they say, This church, what we are doing is what you are going to be confused. So I don't even think it's so much of your church as well as all the program because. Then it's a problem if you now go to a church that you people have program Monday to Sunday. If that's the church you attend, I want to, and they now make it compulsory. You know, they can have programs Monday to Sunday, but it's a case of according to your need. But you mm. go to a church Monday to Sunday's program, please, I don't want to be effective at work. I don't want to be mm. effective at other things you do. So, of us, there's no, it's a form of fear of missing out. You go to everything, mm. Mm. everything. So you don't even have the time to process what you've heard. It's a problem. Is a mm. problem. I say it every, with my full chest. It is a problem. You attend all the prayer calls in Lagos, Nigeria, and the world. At what point do you pray to God yourself? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we wrap up this morning, Lord, we ask, please, Lord, show us. You don't reveal to shame, God. You reveal to heal. Lord, take these words and listen with your truth. And let it show us. Let us take. Let it take us on a journey of healing. Lord, you do not find glory in many people. A lot of anointed but broken, battered people. People that love you so much, but at the closed door, they are weeping. They are in cycles. They are wondering, eating what they are doing. But Lord Jesus, there is help, because like your son said, you can. The past can impact what you are now, but your decisions today will impact you tomorrow, and that you can't blame it on anyone. So help us to take responsibility and begin to go on a journey of truth with you. And Lord, we pray, when you expose the truth, the devil will not hijack it in the name of Jesus. We will not give the devil the opportunity to tell us lies, to hijack these things, to help us to, to begin to say, hey, see, it's not your fault that it's your child, so remain there. That's a lie from the pit of hell. We thank you because there is deliverance and there's a way of escape. And everyone under the sound of my voice, Will be set free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Coach Sam, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Everyone, thank have you been blessed? Thank you for wow. having me. What Beautiful. a great joy. What a great joy. Father Lord, we thank you. Father Lord, we give you praise. Remember, you can use this watch to join any other other watches. 9, 12 p.m. is a worship watch. Um, there's 6 p.m. watch. There's 9 p.m. watch, there's 12, there's 3, there's 6. Even as a culture, you don't expect everybody to be on all the watches. However, I remember there was someone that was going through a season in her life. She's on this call. 
she said she was, she's not even in Nigeria. The time zone is crazy. And all she could do was join the watches as she was finding, and eventually she found that deliverance. So ask yourself, what can I do? What's God leading me to do? And I'll tell people, are you led by God? Mm. Are you led by God? And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 3. I will back again, 6 a.m. tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great day. Yes, you can follow him on Instagram at Samoba Femi. I used to tease him. All this thing that he's doing, he used to form coach, coach. I'm his pastor too. I used to pull him, pull his beard. I such a prophetic gift where he'll be running, but he's not running again. It's Jesus. Too. We're going to pray for him tomorrow too when we are done. That's all this. He's one of the people I love that is in this, uh, what's it called? Behavioral place that I can still trust, that they fear God. Not anybody that just coming to tell you, advance, advance. That's the end of your life. Jesus cannot do anything. They lie you. It's still Jesus that will help you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach Sam. We love you. God bless Have you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>